You are listening to episode 279 of the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life podcast. This week's guest is a mama on a mission. And as you know, that's my kind of vibe. Helen Peterson is a work from home mom who has established herself in the online business industry as a virtual assistant and launch strategy specialist. Along with helping her clients with launch strategy and successfully creating and selling their online courses, she also coaches other women in starting their own virtual assistant businesses, regardless of their career path. Her passion stems from guiding women into living the life they've always dreamt up with no financial boundaries and the flexibility to live and travel the way they want to. While you're listening to today's episode, be sure to screenshot that you're listening, throw it on Instagram or your favorite social channel, and tag me in it, at MindBizLife, and I'll reshare with the community. Be sure to also let me know what resonates most with you. Okay, are you ready to meet Helen? You know what to do. <laughs> Tune in, turn it up, let's go. You're listening to Master Your Mind, Business and Life. Conversations with everyday world shifters, truth seekers, and rule breakers. Here's your host, Lauren Smith. Hey, Helen, welcome to the show. I've been looking forward to our conversation. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I love that you're aiding and guiding women in starting their own virtual assistant business, but I'm curious to know the story behind this. Was being an entrepreneur or a launch strategist and a virtual assistant always part of your plan? Yeah, I mean, I, not out of high school into college, but as like looking back now as a child, um, I, my parents actually immigrated from Russia when my mom was pregnant with me and, um, they started a pizza place, like a small hole in the wall pizza business Mm. to just have a family business, like scrape by. They didn't have a college education. Um, we didn't have a lot of money growing up and, but I saw like the hustle behind, you know, having your own business and that kind of stuff. And my goal was always to make it in my education and to just get straight A's, go to a good college. And my goal was actually to be a physician assistant, um, make six figures, provide, you know, a better lifestyle for my parents. Like they've always just worked so hard. There's four kids. They put us all through college so we could have a better future And I was just so motivated to like do well. And in my mind, that was going to college, getting a good degree, going to grad school, working in the medical field, and then having like, you know, a consistent good salary. Um, As I went through, when I was a kid, I had like my own, like I, me and my best friend had our own dog walking business and (laughs) we, you know, like did like all the little dog grooming and pet sitting and all the things we could to like make extra money and stuff. And I don't know, I just always had that like entrepreneurship spirit, but I kind of forced myself into like the normal path, um, of getting a good education and all that, um, through high school and college. And then after college, I realized how much debt you have to go into to go to grad school. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then also just the lifestyle of what it would look like to be an ortho PA working in a hospital setting or working in a, you know, sports medicine clinic. And, um, I really always wanted to be a mom and have like the flexibility of being able to stay home with my kids too. And so I actually pivoted like a couple of years after graduating college. Um, I was working in a PT office and, I started my like fitness blog up and was a personal trainer on the side. So my background really stemmed from like, you know, medical kinesiology, physical therapy office, personal trainer. And I started exploring the online space as like a personal trainer. And I wanted so badly for that to take off and it didn't at all. Um, I like grew a little following on Instagram and stuff, but it didn't actually go anywhere. I think I made maybe like a thousand dollars total in a year or two of being in in the online space. And it was kind of discouraging to be honest. And I just like, was like, I really want to make this online business thing work, but nothing is working the way that I want it to be. And I continued working in the PT clinic. Um, I was still in my mind, like eating hours for medical school. This like, I'm in my mid twenties at this point. And then we had gotten married. Um, I was 25 and we actually got pregnant 
very quickly at 26, which was a surprise, but also like, not like a full surprise, but one of those things where I was like, oh, I thought maybe it would take longer, you know, getting right. birth control and like doing that thing. And so I um, was like, wow, I'm going to be a mom in like nine or 10 months by the time I'm 27. And I don't want to go to grad school after I become a mom. So I really need to figure this out. So I actually started just doing more research on like, what are other jobs you can have in the online space? You know, if this whole personal training thing isn't working out for me online, like what else could I do? And so then I realized like, rather than trying to force my own brand and, you know, trying to sell my own products, I could support other businesses in selling theirs. And so I started looking into this virtual assistant thing. And right around the time that I had my daughter, Emery, um, I found my first client as a virtual assistant. And so I would work just with her napping on my chest. Um, then later as, you know, she got more into a routine, I had, I would just work during nap times and my business like slowly started to grow. Um, so I would say that I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and like, I wanted to have that flexibility, but it didn't work out for me, like the way that I thought it would but it worked out the way that it should have and the way it was supposed to. And now I absolutely love it. I love that that's your perspective of, okay, maybe this, this wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but it's actually a little bit better, you know, like this, this turned out the way it should. And it's so funny. Cause as soon as you said that I looked up on my wall and it says, trust your purpose. And I feel like I just like looked at that at the perfect time. So mm-hmm. I think that really is just owning and being okay with the flexibility of life and knowing like, Hey, my goal when I was in high school is a little bit different now as a 27, 28 year old, who's a mom and married and has diff- my life looks different. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. what do I want to be? Let's get a little bit basic for a second. Some of our listeners may not be familiar with exactly what a virtual assistant is or how they operate. Will you break mm-hmm. it down for us? Yeah, it's a really neat online space. I mean, it's one of those things that where I think it is starting to be a little more known these days, but at the time I didn't even know what I was getting myself into as a virtual assistant. And when I first started, I kind of had it more in my mind as like a personal assistant where you help, you know, a CEO or an online business owner with like scheduling and admin tasks. And that's kind of it. And you just get, you know, paid either hourly or maybe a monthly retainer fee and you have your own business, you are a contractor, but you can have, you know, multiple clients or you can have one big client, like whatever that kind of looks like for you. But as, as I grew in the industry, I realized there's a lot of options and opportunities to being a virtual assistant. And it goes anywhere from like managing social media to being a podcast editor, to um, writing blog posts, doing copywriting for websites. I mean, there's so many opportunities out there, depending on what your background is. I've had, um, you know, people go from being an admin virtual assistant to using their marketing background. And now they have like their own small marketing agency and are able to charge a lot more for those types of services versus, you know, an hourly rate for being an admin assistant. And so there is so many options out there now that the online space is also just growing and the need is higher there's always going to be more and more opportunity in my opinion. Um, I've been seeing it over the last couple of years, but those are just like some of the tasks that you can do as a VA. Um, email marketing is another big one. Create Helping businesses create their online programs or courses, eBooks, design. I mean, there's so many things. Wow. So you can almost take a specialty of whatever you desire and really just become a virtual assistant within that specialty, or it could be a little bit broader depending on your client. Yeah. And I always recommend like, once you are established in your business a little bit and you understand what you really love and enjoy to really dive into a specialty, like, you know, podcast editing or, um, being an email marketing specialist or helping with launches or whatever that looks like, because, you're going to find clients a lot easier if you're really niche down versus if you kind of offer a little bit of everything and anything, you know, business owners want to know that you're really, really good at one thing, um, one or two things even versus just kind of knowing how to do a bunch of random things. But I think 
people get into this like frozen space of, well, I don't know what my specialty would be. So I'm just not going to start at all. But mm. really what you need to do is just start and start taking on random clients, random tasks. And then you'll actually learn what you really love to do and what you're good at. And you'll just learn a lot of stuff along the way that you can offer, you know, down the line as a specialty service. So do you find it better to create packages or do you like more of an hourly rate? Yeah, it totally depends on the service. Um, For something like social media management, packages are great because there's a very clear cut. Okay, we're going to do five posts, you know, per week with these types of captions, this length of a caption. Here's our content calendar for the month. Like it's very strategic and there is not a lot of guesswork with it. So packages work great for those types of services, but for a type of client where you are doing like email inbox management, where things are coming in and out on a regular basis, where some months are busier than others, especially working with like anyone who sells product-based businesses or even online programs where there's Black Friday and like Mother's Day sales and all these times of the year where things get crazier and you're putting in more work. I actually recommend having like a base retainer rate. Um, so they have like a monthly fee that they pay you to hold on to a specific amount of hours, but then you're also still tracking hours to make sure that if you do go over your base rates, you get paid for that work as well. And all of that can be, you know, obviously written out and established in your contracts when you're getting started, just to make sure you're kind of protecting yourself. But yeah, I mean, it really just depends on the type of services, but those are kind of your two major routes. Yeah. So I I like that you break that down because it does make you take a step back and really look at your scope, what your specialty is, all the things that you're, you're highlighting. I guess the next question for anyone listening, who's like, okay, you've got me, Helen, tell me more. (laughs) They probably want to know, well, where do I find these clients? How do I get a client? Yeah. And I mean, that's like one of the things that, you know, a lot of people get stuck on and that's where, things can get tricky if you don't find that first client or two, you know, when you are really motivated to start this, you kind of fall off the wagon of like, well, I can't find a client. So I'm just going to kind of give up. Um, I always say that your first client is the hardest one to get and to find. And then after that, it really turns into a snowball effect. And I have like so many people um, who've taken my VA bootcamp who like go through, come back and say, you know, I have like so many DMs that like I've screenshotted that say the exact same thing where it's like, I, it just took a little bit of time to get that first client. And then it was just like all this momentum picked up and it was a snowball effect and I have a full load now. Right. And so there's so many options though out there as far as just social media, first and foremost, I mean, it's our easiest form of marketing these days and it's free and it's amazing. Um, you can, create like a really basic account, whether that's on Instagram or a Facebook page or even LinkedIn, it really depends the type of client that you're targeting and where they're hanging out. And that's where you want to go first. I always recommend focusing on like one platform and just establishing yourself on there. Um, For me personally, I love Instagram and I've found that a lot of my ideal type of clients hang out there. So that's where I primarily focus my marketing. Um, and then just kind of establishing yourself like, okay, I'm a virtual assistant. These are the services that I offer and starting to put yourself out there first and foremost, because no one's going to know that you're there unless you actually (laughs) show up and say, Hey, I'm a virtual assistant. This is what I can do for you. And then from there, it really, um, depends like Facebook groups. There's so many good ones where, you know, female entrepreneurs or just entrepreneurs in general, um, hang out. And I have seen so many job postings for VAs. So you can always go that route. And then I actually teach a very strategic form of like market research where you're sending out messages to business owners who you would love to work with, to learn more about their brand and what type of assistant they would be looking for. And then you can get a little more narrowed in on like, okay, if this is the type of business owner I want to work for, these are the types of services they're looking for. Now I know who to reach out to, how to word my, you know, uh, my mission statement so they know I can help them and go from there. So it does take legwork, like at the beginning, it's not going to be all of a sudden you just 
open your business doors and, you know, people come flooding in, but I will say like, once you get that first or second client, like word of mouth and referrals is all you need from there to sustain your business. And I've experienced that firsthand, but also like just so many women I know who are in the industry now, um, say the exact same thing. And, and that makes sense. If you strip it down and you look at it, it makes so much sense because as entrepreneur or businesswomen, we're typically talking to other entrepreneurs and businesswomen. So it's like, oh, well, who's doing your social media? Oh, who's, who's helping you send out your newsletter? Who's doing your podcast mm-hmm. editing? These conversations happen, even if they're a one-off conversation, it may have just been a mention. It doesn't even have to be a full-blown conversation about your virtual assistant. It may just be like, oh, I've got this girl, Helen, and she's rocking it. Let me send you her information. Boom. Yeah. That. Well, and I get so many random DMs now too, just because I have established myself in the space from business owners. I don't even know who are asking for virtual assistance. And, um, because I'm at the point where I'm fully booked and I don't take on, you know, just, um, any clients at this point, I post them in my Facebook group. Um, for my virtual assistant bootcamp women to reach out to. So also just being part of communities too yes. is really helpful. And the way you find those is just by opening your up yourself a little bit on social, whether it's Facebook groups or Instagram and messaging, you know, other virtual assistants and be like, Hey, I am interested in starting or I am looking for a virtual assistant or whatever that looks like. And then it really branches out from there. I, I love that community is, is vital. In, in mm-hmm. all aspects. And I think we really need to remember to take advantage of communities. And sometimes we, we have to look for that community. And if you can't find one, then that's when you create one. And it sounds like that's, that's what you've done all in itself. I'm curious to know a little bit more about the back end of virtual assistants. So if I'm a new, I'm new to the game, what is there that I need to have? Is there, do I need to have like an accountant? Do I need to have a particular program? Is there anything that a starting up person should really have foundational wise? Yeah, honestly, I always say all you need is your computer and Wi-Fi and you can start your business. From (laughs) there, obviously there's going to be steps that you take as your business is getting established. But I think a lot of things like the taxes and contracts and all these online platforms and programs and stuff really kind of scare us away from, well, I don't know how to use, you know, Kajabi, which is a really popular platform for building online courses. Um, And I know that there's clients out there who need Kajabi support. And so it like makes you scared to even dive in because you don't know how to use it. But the cool thing is, is like a lot of the stuff that you learn, you actually learn along the way. And with, especially with platforms and being, you know, efficient in online platforms that your business owners that you're working for are using. A lot of that comes with just straight up experience and diving in and having login information and doing it. And I think that seems intimidating, but there's so many tutorial videos on the platforms on YouTube. Um, I always just tell everyone it, don't be afraid to say yes to a client just because, you know, it, even if you don't know exactly how to do what they're asking you to do and obviously be honest with the fact that like, no, I don't know how to use that platform, but I'm very much willing to learn. And a lot of business owners who are hiring, don't expect you to know how to use Shopify or ship Bob, their fulfillment center, or whatever that looks like, because they're, you know, putting in a new hire. Um, right. It's just like any corporate setting, any office job you have, even if you work in a medical office, there's always new technology that everyone has to learn when they first start a job, right? So it's like, yeah. there's always that learning curve. Um, as far as establishing yourself as a business, I I do have a virtual assistant course. And in the uh, module four, there's I have two lawyers come in to talk about all the Ooh, nitty gritty yeah. like taxes. One's a legal tax lawyer and one is based on um, contracts. And so those are two things that you do want to have established in your business early on, but it doesn't have to be established to start, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that makes a lot of sense because you can start doing the the groundwork for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I love the advice of of saying, I don't know that, but I'm going to figure it out because I don't think we give enough power 
to that statement of, because that just shows a lot about a person in general, shows your perseverance. It shows that you're eager to learn, but also that you're willing to do so. And when you have a client, that's really important as a business owner. That's really important for me to see from other people. Like I don't expect anyone to have all of the answers, but if someone is eager to say, okay, I've never used this program before. Let's give it a whirl. It's like, okay, great. Now I'm also not expecting you to be an expert at it, right? Like I've now have a realistic expectation as to where your skill level is. Therefore, it's going to grant a little bit more grace (laughs) in general, but you're also being real with me. And I know that I can count on you to figure it out and to take the initiative to do so. Yeah. Well, and as business owners, you know, that are established, we know Well, when I first started and I was trying to, you know, do a YouTube channel, I had no idea how to upload videos and create a thumbnail and do all the things that go along with doing that, you know, but you watch videos and you figure it out and you learn. And so I think business owners in general understand that. And if they're looking for a very specific specialist to help them with something very specific, they will go find that person who's a specialist in something. But if they're at this point, looking for a general admin VA to just help with a variety of tasks in their business, they're going to understand that there's a learning curve and a training period there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you as a virtual assistant, I'm sure may even come in with different knowledge where a client's using one platform and you're like, Oh, Hey, I've actually worked with a client who had a better experience with this. And then therefore you're bringing your knowledge to the table like you mm-hmm. said, your experience, and then they may, Hey, you're right. This is a better platform for me to use. So yeah. I think, I think using your voice sounds like it's, it also comes into power here, your skills and just embodying your full potential. Yeah. I have an assistant in my business at this point, and she comes up with ideas all the time for me that are really helpful. You know, I'm like, Oh yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. So yeah, let's go that direction instead. And so it is, it's like having that right-hand person to kind of bounce ideas off of, um, and just have them say, oh, I saw this, you know, similar business do something like this. We could try it with our own twist on it, you know? So it's really nice to have someone else in your business to have a different perspective and to bring in like their experience, regardless of how long or short their experience has been so far. Yeah, I think that's because we're in our business. We're so in it sometimes that that's why we need those other people to be our eyeballs and to be our ears and to, you know, give us a little nudge into a different direction or or spark an idea. Mm -hmm. This comes back to community. It all comes back to that community piece. (laughs) Yes, agreed. (laughs) Helen, you've shared so many incredible tips with us. I know our audience will want more. Where can they go to connect with you further? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I mainly hang out on Instagram. Um, I am Peterson virtual assistant on there. And in my link tree, I have a free 30 minute video training. If you're interested in starting your VA business, Um, I have a bunch of free resources in there. Um, And then I also love, you know, obviously catching up with business owners. My specialty is helping with online course launches. And so if that's something that as a business owner, you've thought about creating an online course. Um, that's where my zone of genius is in. And so I would love to strategize with you about your launch and your idea. So either of those routes, you can learn more about me on my Instagram and reach out. I love voice messages on there. So that's- <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've, I've started using those more and I was like, I, I didn't know I would love this feature so much. Yeah, it's so great. They're so great. Helen, you are a bright light in this world. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Helen is currently pregnant with her second child. So when I say she's a mama on a mission, she really is. I've linked Helen's website and social channels on this week's episode notes found on mindbizlife.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, share with a friend and be sure to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you tune in and turn it up. I'm back on Friday for another episode of Fuel Your Life Friday. But until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.